Man, oh man, oh Switchback, how could you do this to us? Promise us the world and not deliver. No other game company in the history of existence has ever done that before. In all seriousness, I was extremely excited for Switchback for the PSVR. I actually pre-ordered the game back in January, to be fair, knowing pretty little about the game or the concept, but just solely off the fact that my whole reasoning of getting into VR in the first place was to experience horror games in a different way. You see, if you've been watching my channel, you know I've got three flavors, Metroidvanias, Souls Likes, and horror games. Now, with that being said, I've never been a huge fan of the Dark Picture Studios. I've never disliked them either, but they've always been more like the American horror story of the genre. Never scary, more just entertaining, if that makes sense. Couple that with the day one reviews of everyone hating on the game and my expectations were in the fucking dump. Thankfully, due to all these factors though, I think it contributed to being a much better experience than I was expecting. And let me tell you why. If you like what you see today, consider liking and subscribing. And if you're feeling extra spooky, hit that bell notification. Let's get to it. Switchback doesn't have much in the way of story. It's all told through context and many cutscenes between levels. The cutscenes suck, I'll be honest, and add literally zero to the experience. They're typically extremely blurry in my experience and kind of just show the people you save or didn't save on the train that you're riding prior to your crash, which is basically the whole premise of the game. You're in a train wreck and somehow that translates to you riding a roller coaster during your unconsciousness through the demon Belial's hellscape. It's pretty cheesy, but honestly, who cares? You're here for the gameplay and that's what matters, so let's talk about it. Switchback is an on the rail shooter, literally. Now, I know there's a lot of people who are going to compare it to Rush of Blood. I don't have that context, so I'm starting fresh. There's two main layers to the game and they're both simple in concept. Navigate through a haunted house style roller coaster ride and shoot everything in your fucking path in order to keep your multiplier up and earn a high score. Marked items like this net you more points, but your goal is to never stop shooting, whether it's enemies or just fucking bottles on the ground. There are some very light puzzles and a couple instances where you have options to save, kill, or abandon passengers, and then a couple boss fights as well. All in all, I'd say the gameplay is good. It's not great, but it definitely did have some brilliant moments. But most importantly, it was fun, and especially in the beginning, the pop-out scares did have me screaming more times than I'd like to admit. From a technical standpoint, I'm not going to argue against the masses on this one. This game is no technical achievement by a long shot. It's riddled with poppin', which in my opinion is its worst offense. Anything further than 5 feet does have a slight blurriness to it, and there's more loading screens than feels right on a current gen console. And altogether, the graphics are just mid. The thing is though that most of these things I would have been fine with if the game didn't have so much squandered potential. Loading screens and the slight fuzziness at a distance wasn't the deal breaker for me. It was the awesome buildups that led to essentially nothing. For example, the don't blink part that was advertised before the game released. The blinking aspect of the technology was fucking awesome. As quick as you blink, them boys moved, but that part felt like 30 seconds and ultimately just felt like a letdown. Not to mention set pieces that had so much potential, but just were never fully realized. The vision just was not there in this game, and that's a shame. But hear me out, because with all these negatives, you might think that this was an awful experience, and low-key, this might be more of a testament of how much better games are in virtual reality versus flat, but with all these gripes, I still recommend this game. 
throughout the four hours roughly that it took me to beat it, I still wanted to play more because I was smiling the whole way through. Competing with my brother for the high score that I easily destroyed him on was a blast and while I'm a little depressed with what could have been, I'm happy with the experience I got. But wait for a sale. It's a 7 out of 10. Take it or leave it. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, really quick, I want to thank Motion Sick VR for some of the footage for the game because I lost some of mine. And also, this is only my second VR review. So if there are things specifically that you would like me to focus on in these reviews, please let me know in the comments. I'll be glad to implement them in my scripts. Thanks for watching, y'all. Have a good one.